There are many different ways to create difficulty in rhythm games. As rhythm games have developed over the last 20 years, the genre has progressed to allow various ways for developers to make a rhythm game chart hard. Whether it's with gameplay mechanics and controllers, or just a specific style of charting, there are lots of ways you can make a chart hard. One of those ways is by harnessing something that's very common in music, BPM changes. Many different types of music see the speed of the song change as it goes for dramatic effect, increase or decrease in intensity, or to catch the listener off guard, for example. So when you're charting a song for rhythm games, it makes sense to have the chart's BPM change with the song. However, sometimes the charter might be feeling a little spicy, a little creative, and they might want to change the speed of the song where the BPM never actually changes. And maybe they want to do that a lot. Or maybe the BPM of the song that they're charting changes a lot. So much so that the difficulty of the song lies in analyzing and processing the music's heavy speed changes. That is what brings us to Soflon. Soflon is a catch-all term used to describe rhythm game charts with heavy or rapid speed changes. Now keep in mind, this doesn't necessarily mean the song has heavy BPM changes, as there are ways to achieve Soflon with a song that has no speed changes. One example would be by simply doubling the BPM so that it still lines up with the original BPM, but now the chart scrolls much faster. As such, I wouldn't say that songs with speed changes are a gimmick, because songs change speed. However, something like Soflon charts are a lot closer to a gimmick, in the sense that the Soflon speed changing is what defines the difficulty of a chart. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Where did the term Soflon come from? The term Soflon is a shortening of the 2DX song titled Soft Landing on the Body. While Soft Landing on the Body wasn't the first song with speed changes, it sure, uh, has them. According to the producer, the jump to 318 BPM is actually a bug due to the time signature of the song changing to 7-8. This apparently unintentionally caused the BPM to double, and said bug was not fixed before release. So now we have a song that has a rapid BPM shift doubling the speed in the middle of the song, seemingly with no indication. Thus the term Soflon was coined to reference charts with big or sudden BPM changes. A whole style of charting created by a bug. Many years later, Soflon has actually become an official term in Bimani, starting in 2DX27 Heroic Verse. It's used as an official descriptor of chart style on the notes radar present in 2DX from Heroic Verse and onward. Soflon has become a very present type of charting style in Bimani over the years, and it is featured in some of Bimani's most iconic songs and charts. So I wanted to take a little time today to show some of the more notable examples of Soflon in a few different Bimani games, what they look like, and also how players generally handle Soflon in each game, as different Pomani games tend to have different tech for handling the changes. With all that said, let's get started. Also, hi, please check out my Patreon, it's linked in the description. Please, please, I beg you. Let's start off with DDR. DDR is a game that has used Soflon type charting for a long time, going back very far in the series history. It is often reserved for the game's hardest songs, creating extremely difficult unlocks and leading people to often declare hard DDR charts gimmicky for leaning on Soflon charting styles. No matter what you think of it, it's tough content, and for a long time, the only way to deal with Soflon has been to just read slow. It's handled instead by simply reading at a very slow speed so that the maximum speed of the song is readable, forcing the player to read very dense, low speed sections along the way. So let's take a look at a few notable Sofon charts in DDR. First up is Pluto. First appearing in Supernova 2, Pluto is notable for its second half that is essentially untelegraphed varying length stops, but it at least doesn't have a super wide BPM range. Up next is Fascination Max, which is one of many songs that feature a very high top speed, forcing you to use a low speed mod so that you can read the fast section. Fascination Max is full of untelegraphed slowdowns as the song jumps between 100, 200, and 400 BPM.
Over the Period is a pretty iconic DDR boss song from DDR 2014, and it features an absolutely ridiculous BPM range of 23 to 840. The song features constant up and down speed changes and a max top speed forcing you to read slow. It also has notes that sort of slow down and jump forward, which are actually pretty uncommon in DDR, and it features a rapid speed up section at the end. Up next is Delta Max, featuring a BPM range of 100 to 573. The main gimmick of this song is that the speed increases very slowly throughout the entire song, from the beginning all the way to the end. Because of this gradual BPM shift, it makes timing very difficult. As a side note, I'm not sure if this technically counts as Soflan, because there's not actually a lot of BPM changes, the BPM change is very consistent, but with it having such a wide BPM range, I'm gonna include it. Next is the infamous Chaos, which is extremely stop heavy and essentially requires memorization. And lastly, in DDR, we have Ace for Aces, another iconic DDR boss song by Tag, the same creator as Over the Period. Ace for Aces is another Sofon song structured similar to Over the Period, featuring another wide BPM range of 50 to 800, forcing the player to read slow with most of the song hovering around 200 to 400 BPM. As such, reading the 50 BPM section is extremely difficult. As I mentioned, DDR doesn't really have any tools for the player to manage so far. They're simply required to read slow and deal with it. However, in our next game, the players at least have one tool to deal with speed changes. So let's move on to Sound Voltex. Sound Voltex doesn't dabble in Sofon extremely often, but where it does, it often leans heavier into requiring the player to do on-the-fly speed changes, where DDR normally can't. In Sound Voltex, before starting a song, you can adjust the scroll speed by holding the start button and turning one of the knobs. Some Soflon charts essentially require you to do this mid-song if you don't want to read the chart at a horrendously slow scroll speed, which is much less common in Voltex compared to DDR. Starting off a little bit simple, we have Take. As far as Soflon songs in Voltex go, Take is fairly tame. It features a few different speeds through the main song, and a really high speed increase at the end, requiring on-the-fly adjustment. Most players will also play the main part of the song at a slightly slower speed to facilitate making the speed change a bit easier. Up next we have the infamous Speed Star Kanade, featuring a 999 BPM section, essentially requiring the player to adjust their speed mid-song.
Sun Voltex also has two notable Soulflon boss songs. First up is Feel Seasickness, which is a heavy slowdown song. Most of the song can be read at your base speed, but memorization is going to be required for learning when the slowdowns are, where they are, and how slow it gets. And finally, we have Shockwave Syndrome. Shockwave Syndrome is the ultimate final Soflon boss song. It features a BPM range of 43 to 440. It requires reading a generally slower speed than normal due to the speed up section in the middle, though some people just choose to memorize that part instead. My favorite part about this chart is that it features actual telegraphs for when the chart is going to stop. Sound Voltex features alternate FX notes that play a key sound when they're hit. They're also colored slightly differently. Shockwave Syndrome's 20 always stops on the FX notes, so you can use that to learn when and where the stops are. The song is extremely satisfying to play once you get a handle on where the stops are. Despite having telegraphs, some memorization is still generally needed for how long the stops are, but having the telegraphs there for learning the chart is really welcome. So in Sound Voltex, we at least have one tool to deal with Soflon. However, next we'll look at the game that has the most tools for players to handle Soflon, and the game that has the most Soflon content, most likely out of any Bimani rhythm game. 2DX is obviously the origin of Soflon, and I would say is the game that uses it the most in its normal song list. You'll find plenty of charts in each mix that have Soflon, most likely since it's considered one of the main skills in 2DX based on the notes radar. 2DX players actually have a really good way to manage Soflon called floating high speed. If you're using the Sudden Plus modifier, the modifier that allows you to cover part of the lane from the top, you can press effect while holding start to switch to floating high speed mode. Aside from this allowing you to lock your base screen number so that you don't have to adjust your scroll speed every chart, it will also make it so that holding start and moving the turntable doesn't actually adjust your green number anymore. What it does instead is allow you to utilize a tech called floating. During a song, when the BPM changes, so does your green number. However, if you hold start and turn the turntable any amount, it will reset the green number to your base green number. This allows you to stop and adjust the scroll speed of the song mid-chart, helping return the scroll speed to something more readable. 2DX has a massive wealth of Soflon songs, so I picked out a few just to take a look at here. I had to get a little bit more in-depth on the analysis because the tech in Soflon in 2DX is a bit heavier. Starting off, a good example of something with a very clear spot to float is Kid A. Right after the intro, the song jumps from 90 to 192 BPM. Hardly so flan, but it gives us a good look at what floating is like and how players can deal with speed changes in 2DX. Getting into the real Soflon, we have Why and Co. is Dead or Alive, a song with an absolutely ridiculous speed range of 145 to 876. The main Soflon part of the song comes with a drastic speed up section before resetting to the original BPM. From what I can tell, in this play, it's solved by the player timing his start presses with the white keys in the build up to drastically lower his speed very quickly. Pressing white keys while holding start drops your speed by a large amount. So he does this a few times in a row to lower his speed extremely far down to be ready for the massive buildup. This is known as gear shifting. It's very cleanly executed and really impressive as he has to let go of start between the white keys so that he doesn't speed himself up by pressing the black keys. Then he floats back to his normal speed when the speed resets to 145. Really well done. Damn. 
Another very iconic song in this category is Himiko, a very iconic and difficult 12 featuring a slowdown in the middle and the end of the song. In this video, we can see Yutaka doing some really well executed floating and gear shifting to handle the slowdown and speed up, while obviously handling the high density of the rest of the chart very well. The chart ends with another slowdown and a gradual drift down another 5 BPM as the song wraps up. This Is Not The Angels is notable for featuring some much more frequent speed changes, often manifesting in brief slowdowns meant to trip the player up if they aren't ready for them. No floating is necessary on this chart, but practice and memorization of the chart stops is necessary if you want to land a good score. Theory is fun because in addition to being a Sofon chart, it is also very scratch heavy, adding in complexity to a skill set that many people struggle with. It features a slowdown into a scratch section necessitating a float, leading back into a very gradual speed up, requiring additional floating to readjust going into the outro. Definitely a very tricky and technical track. And we can't end without talking about May, one of the most iconic 2DX songs of all time, if not the most. The ultimate final boss song of 2DX for many years is a bit of a Sofon song. Aside from being an absolutely brutally dense song on the Another Difficulty, it features a famously difficult to handle slowdown section that speeds back up to the max speed of the track before absolutely blasting you with notes. You don't really have to float it, so it's maybe not as technical as some of the others we've talked about. But combining the slowdown in the middle with the extreme note density really brings the difficulty to the table when taking on this beast. So that's a brief overview of Soflan. What was once a funny little bug in a chart from Second Style has become a defining chart characteristic of modern rhythm games. Whether you like it or not, Soflan is a common property of modern charting in rhythm games, and it's a skill that most players should definitely spend time working on. Who knows, maybe if you get your Soflan skills good enough, you'll be ready for that next Soflan boss song waiting just around the corner. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more videos like this covering rhythm game terminology. I have a few more videos like this I'd like to try, but I'm curious to see what the reception's like. A huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Check out my Twitter, Twitch, and my community Discord. Links are in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.